Book Two, Canto Eight. The world of falsehood, the mother of evil, and the sons of darkness. Then could he see the hidden heart of night, the labor of its stark unconsciousness revealed, the endless, terrible, inane, a spiritless, blank infinity was there. A nature that denied the eternal truth in the vain braggart freedom of its thought hoped to abolish God and reign alone. There was no sovereign guest, no witness light, unhelped it would create its own bleak world. Its large blind eyes looked out on demon acts. Its deaf ears heard the untruth its dumb lips spoke. Its huge, misguided fancy took vast shapes. Its mindless sentience quivered with fierce conceits, engendering a brute principle of life, evil and pain begot. A monstrous soul. The anarchs of the formless depths arose. Great titan beings and demoniac powers. World egos racked with lust and thought and will. Vast minds and lives without a spirit within. Impatient architects of error's house. Leaders of the cosmic ignorance and unrest. And sponsors of sorrow and mortality. Embodied the dark ideas of the abyss. A shadow substance into emptiness came. Dim forms were born in the unthinking void and eddies met and made an adverse space in whose black folds being imagined hell. His eyes, piercing the triple-plated gloom, identified their sight with its blind stare. Accustomed to the unnatural dark they saw, unreality made real and conscious night. A violent, fierce and formidable world, an ancient womb of huge calamitous dreams coiled like a larva in the obscurity that keeps it from the spear points of heaven's stars. It was the gate of a false infinite, an eternity of disastrous absolutes, 
an immense negation of spiritual things. All once self-luminous in the spirit's sphere turned now into their own dark contraries, being collapsed into a pointless void that yet was a zero parent of the worlds. In conscience, swallowing up the cosmic mind, produced a universe from its lethal sleep. Bliss into black coma fallen, insensible, coiled back to itself, and God's eternal joy through a false poignant figure of grief and pain still dolorously nailed upon a cross fixed in the soil of a dumb insentient world where birth was a pang and death an agony lest all too soon should change again to bliss. Thought sat a priestess of perversity on her black tripod of the triune snake, reading by opposite signs the eternal script. A sorceress reversing life's God frame. In darkling aisles, with evil eyes for lamps, and fatal voices chanting from the apse, in strange, infernal, dim basilicas, intoning the magic of the unholy word, the ominous, profound initiate performed the ritual of her mysteries. There, Suffering was nature's daily food, alluring to the anguished heart and flesh, and torture was the formula of delight. Pain mimicked the celestial ecstasy. There, good, a faithless gardener of God, Watered with virtue the world's upas tree, and careful of the outward word and act, engrafted his hypocrite blooms on native ill. All high things served their nether opposite. The forms of gods sustained a demon cult. Heaven's face became a mask and snare of hell. There, in the heart of vain phenomenon, in an enormous action's rhythm core, he saw a shape illimitable and vague, sitting on death who swallows all things born. 
A chill fixed face With dire and motionless eyes Her dreadful trident In her shadowy hand outstretched She pierced all creatures With one face